Hey guys, Anthony Fontana here. I'm a CPA, and today I go over how I settle taxes for a client with the IRS. We go over all the forms filed, the 433A, OIC, the 656, the rejection letter we got, our response, the amended 656, and ultimately the acceptance letter from the IRS. If this is something that you're looking to learn more about, be sure to stay tuned and especially to find out how much exactly we save for this client. All right, so a quick overview. Taxpayer came to me after he had already filed the 433A OIC and the 656, and he got a rejection letter uh, from the IRS. Didn't really know what to do. He is single, he has no dependents, and he is self-employed. All right, so let's take a look at the 433 that he filed here. This is the original one he filed, okay? Um, pretty straightforward though. He is a renter, not married, um, no dependents. He's not employed, he's self-employed. So he didn't fill out this section here. If you want kind of like a more detailed um, explanation of how to fill this thing out, I do have a video on that. So be sure to check that out. I'll put a link in the description as well as a tag up above here. Um, here's some of his personal assets. Really doesn't have much in the bank account. Right, 12 bucks, nothing really there. Um, let's see here, nothing else that he filled out there. No retirement accounts, investment accounts, two cars that he did list here. Uh, come to find out that this Ford, you'll see, um, is a business car. So he shouldn't have listed that here, uh, but that's okay. We did end up fixing that. Okay, so there's that. So he's got a little bit um, that's gonna go towards the offer there. He did fill this out properly. No loans on the cars, yep. And he did the 80%. <laughs> Um, okay, so this is essentially his value of the cars, the two cars there. Here's the self-employed information there, um, and then the money that's in the business account. As well as he's got some like uh, equipment for his business that he listed here. But you'll see, right, he didn't actually list this 3200 in the total here. He just listed his business um, bank account there. Um, because these are what we call income producing assets. And he did this properly, actually. Okay. Um, let's see here. What else happened? Then he did his like essentially PL here, income for the business, expenses for the business, his net that he's making on a monthly basis with the business. Um, 3581. There it is again. And then his living expenses, which uh, we'll find out that he did miss some things here, but we did fix that um, later. Okay. Um, essentially, on this one, he's getting. 677 as what we call disposable and that goes towards the offer so you'll see down here now right how we calculate the offer that 677 he did he filled this out actually incorrectly but um again we do address that later 677 times the 12 he did the um this is the lump sum but you'll find out he filled out the 656 using this should have been using this calculation but anyways right um 8,100 goes down here towards the offer, plus his assets, essentially the cars that he had, plus the little bit that he had in the business bank account. Um, that was the offer that he sent in, okay? Here's a 656 that he originally filed. This, I mean, these, again, I do have a video on how to fill this out properly, um, so be sure to check that out. If you're looking on how to do that, okay, it looks like we got all right a lot of years that we're including as his tax debt in this offer here. A lot of years, ACA. That's um, one of those. What do they call the health insurance? He didn't have health insurance. The penalty on that. Um, so he included that in there. Didn't really fill any of that. It's not business debt. This is personal debt. Um, income tax. Data to collectability. This is like uh, you know ninety percent of the offers we do is is that data to collectability. So. Doing that right, this is where he did it incorrectly, right? Lump sum, this is what he should have done. You'll see here, if you pay it, your offer in five or fewer payments, right? And if we see here, if you pay your offer in five or fewer, but he didn't fill that out. He left that blank and he went down here, six to 24. And that's what he didn't do. He should have done this right here, but that's okay. Again, we did fix that. He was actually making payments um, to the IRS of that 605 um, in between the time that he did file this uh, offer and the time that it got rejected and I came onto the case. So he had already started paying down this 10,000 bucks, which was, uh, which was a good, it was for his case. It was, it was, it was good. It was in his favor that he had uh, already been making payments. So, um, anyways, there is that, um, essentially there's not much left here. 
All right, so if you're looking to learn anything from this video, this is where we're learning a lot. This is the rejection letter that we got from the IRS. Whenever you, if you ever file an offer and it does get rejected, you make sure you be, uh, you double check these, uh, this rejection letter that, that came through the, the assets and income um, tables that they, they provide. Make sure they didn't make any errors because they do. They're human at the IRS, just like us. Everyone makes uh, errors here. So um, make sure that you do check these out. Okay. So he had sent this over to me. We reviewed it before I took on the case, right? I want to make sure that I can help him out. And I did look at this before I took him on um, and then found out that there were a lot of errors on here. Okay. So. This is the rejection letter. Anyways, just says basically we rejected the offer. Thank you very much, IRS. Okay, and we're like, okay, is this correct? No, so this is where it starts, okay? This is essentially the, the 433 on another format, essentially, is what this is, okay? Um, you'll see when they whenever they come back to, to review your offer, they ask for updated statements. Um, and of course things change in your bank accounts. So, um, and his did, right? You remember it was like $12 originally on the 433. Now he's got like 300 bucks in here. But the thing is they didn't. So anywhere I put a highlight here, these are the errors. Okay. Um, they didn't give him the exemption amount. You get up to a thousand dollars in exemption on, um, your personal bank accounts that would not go towards the offer. So net equity amount, this should be zero. We should get that thousand dollars here and then a zero here. Um, and they didn't give that to him. Also, I found out that he, you know, he has these two cars, but one of them is the business car that I did explain earlier, and that car uh, should not be listed here, right? Because it's an income-producing asset, and I'll show you in the in you know in a little bit my statement that I sent in response to this. It actually does have the what they call the IRM, the Internal Revenue Manual, the thing that these uh, offer examiners use um, to do their job and uh, where it references how this is income producing and that should not be included in the offer. So that should be a zero there. And then they didn't give him the exemption amount for his personal car. So you get up to 3450, right? You'll see even on this um, 433, there it is, subtract 3450, right? And we didn't get that 3450 here as a subtraction. So, um, or here is more like it. So essentially all this should be removed from this offer here. Um, and just whatever is in this uh, cash app, there you go. Okay, there's errors there. What else did I find? Um, this is on the living expenses. So if we're looking at the 433, we're looking here, right? What is this, section seven? of the 433 down here, monthly household expenses, okay? Um, they gave him nothing for his car, right? Uh, ownership, okay, looks like that's an error. This is, is not an error here, this is correct. He should not get anything for an ownership because he's not paying on the car, he already owns uh, that thing outright. So that's incorrect, uh, let's save there. But they didn't give him anything for the operating, which he should get. The 242, he should get that um, as an operating. That's essentially like a gimme. It's an uh, IRS standard that they give you. Um, I'll include a link to the standards um, in the description below. So if you're filling that, that 433, you can be sure to check that out. Uh, but again, my how to fill out the 433 video is goes into way more details on how to get that done. But nonetheless, he should have got this as an expense here. Um yeah, and everything else. Now, he did have like a student loan debt here, but he wasn't actually making payments. So they were correct on that one. Um, let's see here. And then the housing, right? So they give him 650, but he was paying a lot more than 650. So we did change that as well. Let's see, what else did we change? So he's getting more in monthly expenses. These are his business assets. And as you can tell, they grew, okay? Um, now, I think at the beginning it was like $200 they were at. This thing definitely grew by the time he filed it to the time you know we were working with the examiner. So this definitely changed the offer for sure. Uh, but nonetheless, so we kept those on there, unfortunately for him. And here is his, um, the sole proprietorship, the essentially P&L, the income and expenses from the sole prop. Um, so this is what they came up with um, based on the P&L that he sent. Um, and then they essentially just didn't allow 
this is wages. This is actually these were um, independent contractors. So this was a contracting expense. And they didn't allow it. Uh, I think it's because he didn't send over like the 1099s that he filed. So essentially, I just grabbed those and we filed, we sent those over to, to prove that, hey, he did pay that. So that really did lower this, this bottom line here. It's kind of funky the way they did this here. Um, I'm not so sure why they do this, but nonetheless, they do the 5880, right, minus the total expenses, the 46. And then they divide it by 12. And that's how they get that 4512 down there. But if we were to do 58800 minus 4653 minus his wages, right? 13030 equals divided by 12. That's what it should have been 3400 as a monthly income. About $1,000, $1,100 difference. There's a big difference. Okay. Um, and here is essentially their calculation of what his offer right should be can be, be based on this but we know again there are um errors and they do see right your total liability that's like a, his current liability with the irs 116 almost hundred seventeen thousand dollars that he owes okay all right so here's what we did we filed a statement back to the examiner saying hey we do not agree with what you had sent us here okay so um i kind of explained that hey i just got engaged by the the taxpayer to help him out with this offer and you know poa i found filed the poa is what this is saying here's the items uh, in disagreement right we didn't get that thousand dollar exemption on the personal account the ford should be an income producing asset right here's the irm that we um referenced saying that it is an income producing asset and then that we also didn't get the exemption of the 3450 from the personal car so there's that like we explained earlier just kind of explained everything that i did uh, earlier here you know taxpayers and, and try and make it as, as simple as possible in terms of like one two three easy to to follow here for the examiner uh, but the you know the the business income 3,500, I think my calculator, what was that at? 3,400. So I think things changed by the time that um, that this was calculated, the uh, P&L versus what he had given me, like an updated one. So it changed a little bit. His income went up a little bit. Uh, but nonetheless, I did give him the P&L and the 1099s, like I said earlier. And the housing expense is currently 1,800 bucks. I think they gave him like 650 is what they did. Um, if we see that right, yeah, 650 is what they gave him. So 1800 bucks gave him the rental agreement, you know, and then the bank statements and the check image showing that, Hey, he's been paying this thing. Um, so Hey, adjust this essentially I'm just telling them, please adjust this thing and, uh, send over a revised offer. Well, as in the title of this video, the offer did get accepted. So they did adjust this addendum, right? They make you fill out this, um, uh, an amended like 656. It's got all the same years in there, um, but this was the original amount, but now here's the new amount. You'll see that right there, 23705. And essentially that was his like uh, business account. So it was like a cryptocurrency account and then his like checking account for his business. And that's all it was because we did get more living expenses than he had in monthly income so there was essentially no disposable income so it was just whatever his assets were and that's what we got the, the twenty three thousand uh, dollars and it, like you can kind of see most of that here right here that 23 so things again changed by the time this offer got accepted but essentially that's what we that's what our offer is here right there okay and he had already paid most of this because he'd been making those monthly payments but nonetheless we did adjust it a little bit um and then he had to you know Phil, he had to send this back in, or sign this, send this back. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. Here it is. This is what I call the golden ticket with the IRS. It's the uh, offer acceptance letter, right? So they send one to me because I'm on power of attorney. And then here it is, right? There it is. We have accepted your offer and compromise. There it is. And you know, he's got to continue making the, those payments on a monthly basis, but he's already been paying. So they applied that toward the uh, accepted offer. So he's essentially all halfway there, right? 23, I think was what the offer was 23, right? 23, seven, he's paid 11. So he's, um, 
just about halfway there by the time we got this. Um, so that was it, man. He was stoked to get this, of course, right? Because he had owed 116000 and then we got it accepted for twenty three. So 116 minus 23, $93,000 is what he kind of saved by going through this whole thing. It's not chump change. It's a lot of money he saved there by, by going through this. And he had almost given up after he'd got the rejection. So then he came to me, right? Um, and I guess thank God for him that he came to me because then he was able to save a whole bunch of money there um, and then get his taxes back on track. Well, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If it was, this is kind of what I do here. I do offering compromises. I'll do these uh, more often here as well. Um, as they kind of come through, I will post these. Hopefully you've learned a lot. If you did, please subscribe, hit that like button, um, support the channel here, share this with anyone you think this may be helpful for. Again, be sure to check out other links in the description for other videos that I have that are related to the offer and compromise. Thank you so much, guys.